Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay in Baltimore. In Venezuela, on Tuesday, President Hugo Chavez died after a long fight against cancer. The American media wasted no time establishing its line towards the death. Here's the New York Times. Chavez dies, leaving a bitterly divided Venezuela. Le one of the articles, leftist demise at 58 deepens crisis in a divided country. Another article, a polarizing figure who led a movement. Well, my question is, exactly which country is it on this planet which is not bitterly divided? The United States, for example, which just, just ended recently an election permeated, dripping with racism? A country where one president has been assassinated, a civil rights leader was assassinated, a candidate for president was assassinated? Which country is it that isn't bitterly divided? And of course, in a country with a lot of oil resources, there is going to be a big division about who owns those resources, just as there are exactly the same kind of divisions on every planet, every country on the planet. Anyway, that's my diatribe. Now joining us to talk about the death of Hugo Chavez is Alex Maine. Alex is a policy analyst at CEPR in Washington, D.C. He worked for some time as a consultant to the Venezuelan government. Thanks very much for joining us, Alex. Thank you, Paul. So, so what, uh, I, I guess I, I, what I'm saying is not that it, Venezuela isn't divided, and yeah, the, to some extent that division will be bitter, although I, we'll, we'll see exactly how this plays out. Uh, but every country is. But why is the New York Times making that their lead? Well, I mean, what we're seeing now today, uh, the leads of many papers, is uh, a really absurd caricature of um, what Chavez was and what Venezuela is uh, that I think is frankly very insulting, uh, really, for the Venezuelan people who are transformed uh, into sort of wild-eyed fanatics uh, that, you know, worship Chavez like the Messiah, although um, apparently he's driven the economy into the ground, if you believe uh, what many of these media outlets are saying. Um, and, you know, that's just so uh, remote from the reality uh, on the ground in Venezuela. Um, Chavez is often depicted as, uh, you know, being a truly radical socialist. I think uh, he probably is at heart, but he's taken his country through, um, you know, several steps that are still far beyond socialism. Um, uh, he's taken it from uh, a wasteland that was... Uh, uh, the case in the 1990s um, that neoliberalism uh, uh, created in Venezuela, um, where the state was reduced to nearly nothing, and the state oil company, um, which was absolutely vital uh, for the health of the economy, uh, was being progressively privatized and really in the hands of a managerial class uh, that did not have the interests of the country at heart. So um, that uh, oil industry was recovered. Uh, under President Chavez, uh, with a great deal of uh, division, polarization, um, and um, a, a real battle, uh, as it turned out, a political battle that um, culminated with a coup d'etat in April of 2002, uh, followed by um, a prolonged uh, oil strike where this managerial class succeeded in closing down the oil industry and bringing the country um, to uh, its knees uh, economically. That was truly the worst time um, under Chavismo, and it was uh, provoked by the opposition. Since then, since 2004, uh, the country's economy has actually been quite healthy with a pretty steady uh, rate of per capita GDP growth of about 2.5% uh, per year, even when you include uh, the effect of uh, the global recession, which did hit Venezuela pretty hard in uh, 2009 in particular. And uh, today, uh, Venezuela is a much healthier place economically, and uh, we're also seeing uh, something closer to, I would say, a social democratic state, not a radical socialist state. We're very far from that at the moment, uh, but certainly uh, where the state has a great deal more control of uh, various strategic sectors of the economy, in particular, in particular the oil industry, and is doing a much better job of distributing the oil revenues uh, to people that have been traditionally marginalized, poor of Venezuela, and uh, that the amount of poverty has really um, been cut in half. So, uh, Hello everyone, welcome to GGN. Today is 
Wednesday, March 6, 2013, and I'm Darko. All right, this is just one article among many uh, that are out there. Chavez wasn't just a zany buffoon, he was an oppressive autocrat. And this is from the Atlantic.com. One irony of his rule is that it eventually curtailed freedom of speech much more among his supporters than his detractors. And we have Ch Chavez's legacy, worthy of praise or scorn. So it goes on here, and it says that uh, that Chavez may have been a strong man, but he submitted his leadership and policies to the people 14 times during his 14-year rule and won 13 of those votes by a large margin. Even today, uh, Venezuela has at most 11 political prisoners, hardly the handiwork of another Stalin. Whatever Chavez's failings, they pale before the corruption and desperation that preceded him, and he greatly developed Venezuela's uh, participatory uh, democracy, which is, you know, kind of more close to real democracy instead of representative democracy. The Zach Bochamp from Think Progress goes on there says he may have helped the poor but moved towards greater income uh, equality. Uh, he goes on and says it can't be fully credited to Chavez's policy that uh, his policies had a negative impact on Venezuela's currency and caused crime rates to soar and exhibited an ugly anti-Semitic side. Indeed, nearly half of the country's Jewish population fled during his reign. U.S. ruling elites are celebrating Hugo Chavez's death, says Richard Becker. So, a Latin American expert tells Press TV that the U.S. politicians in Washington, New York, are celebrating the tragic death of Venezuela uh, President Hugo Chavez. We know without any doubt whatsoever that there are celebrations going on in the quarters of uh, power in Washington and New York and so forth. They are happy. They are happy by this terrible, tragic event, which has deprived the people of Venezuela and the people of Latin America of a great leader. Now, this is not me saying that. This is just, I'm going through this. So, Venezuelans pour into streets to mourn Hugo Chavez. I like how they did this because I, I doubt it would just be a hundred people. But it said hundreds of anguished Venezuelans poured into the streets of downtown Caracas, crying, hugging each other, and shouting slogans in support of Chavez, saying, uh, long live Chavismo. And it says, I feel such a big pain, I can't even speak. He was the best thing the country had. I adore him. Let's hope the country calms down and we can continue the task he left us. Quickly, let's just see how the programming and propaganda has worked for the American public who thinks that they're completely free and live in an open democratic society and they're so prosperous because of it. Meanwhile, in America, 100 of thousands won't miss the son of a bitch. So it goes on here, it says there are people that are too stupid to even know what a piece of shit he was. So it says enough of this left wing BS propaganda. Millions of Venezuelans are overjoyed that this despot is gone. Assad says Venezuelan president death is a great loss for Syria. He says the demise of the unique leader is as much a great loss for me personally and the Syrian people as it is for the people of Venezuela. Assad said in a statement broadcasted on uh, state television on Wednesday. Also, he said he repeatedly declared his solidarity with Syria's leadership and its people in the face of fierce imperialistic uh, attack it was exposed to and condemned the American pressure on, on Syria. U.S. plots conquest of Venezuela in wake of Chavez's death or murder. I guess it depends on what uh, what really happened there. But I know that you know they can use, uh, I think Alex Jones was talking about vaccines. I think it's even easier than that. I just, I'll just take Barry Trower's advice or his knowledge uh, by, by saying what? That you could just use microwaves and give people cancer. So, you know, a U.S. corporate financier funded think tank, the American Enterprise Institute, declared in its post-Chavez checklist for U.S. policymakers that the U.S. must move quickly to reckon, reorganize uh, Venezuela according to U.S. interests. Upon its checklist were key demands. The ouster of narco kingpins who now hold senior posts in the government, the respect for a constitutional secession, the adoption of meaningful electoral reforms, uh, says dismantling of Iran and Hezbollah networks in Venezuela, the adoption of meaningful electoral reforms, but to ensure a fair campaign environment and transparent vote count. Uh, in reality, what they're uh, talking about is dismantling every obstacle that has prevented the U.S. and corporate financier interests that directed it, uh, that direct it from installing a client regime and extracting entirely Venezuela's wealth while obstructing, even dismantling the progress and influence achieved by late President Chavez throughout South America and beyond. So part of the checklist he talks about, uh, or the AEI, 
It's time now for the U.S. diplomats to begin a quiet dialogue with key regional powers to explain the high costs of Chavez's criminal regime, including the impact of Chavista complicity with narco traffickers uh, who sow mayhem in Colombia. So he goes on here and talks about how uh, Venezuelan Democrats, the AE, AEI means Wall Street-backed proxies like Henry uh, Radonsky and his Primero Justice, uh, Justica, Justice First Political Front, two entities the Western media is already gearing up to support ahead of the anticipated elections. The West has position proxies to strip Venezuela to the bones after Chavez's passing. So you can go in there and check out uh, uh, all the links to the, back to the State Department and uh, the CIA and the RAND Corporation and even J.P. Holder. The fate of Venezuela lies in its people's hands. Covert destabilization must be faced by the Venezuelan people with or while the alternative media must do its best to unravel the lies already being spun ahead of the long-planned operations in post-Chavez Venezuela. Chavez's death could be U.S. plot, says Russian communist leader. The death of the Venezuelan leader uh, from cancer may have been part of a plot by the U.S. to infect its enemies in Latin America with the disease, the leader of the party said. In my view, this was far from a coincidence, he said. Here is an investigation under the international under international control into Chavez's death. So I guess he said, uh, Chavez, would it be so strange that they invented the technology to spread cancer and we won't know about it for 50 years? Again, I'm not saying Castro is a wonderful guy and I support him, but I guess he said, Fidel always told me, Chavez, take care of these people who develop technology. You are very careless. Take care of what you eat, what they give you to eat, a little needle and they inject you with I don't know what, he said in late 2011 after he was diagnosed. Chavez knew U.S. marked him for death, says Chavez knew that he was targeted by the U.S. government and expected to die, says Stephen Lemon, American writer in Chicago. Says Chavez uh, said himself that he thought America would marked him for death and he expected to die, he said in his own words. The CIA and their associated elements have a long, odious record of overthrowing governments and assassinating leaders. Says U.S. rejects Venezuela's accusations of conspiracy, so they said on Tuesday, reject allegations of a conspiracy, saying it was absurd to assert Washington was somehow behind Chavez's cancer. Obama, U.S. lawmakers, see new chapter in Venezuela after Chavez's death. Oh, so here we go. It says U.S. officials quickly cast Chavez's death as an opportunity. Don't want to let a crisis go to waste for America to rebuild the relationship with Venezuela and for the country itself to pursue meaningful democratic reforms. Those are all the think tanks and NGOs uh, set up by uh, uh, America and that and globalists or Zionists. On that note, I came across this on InfoWars. Uh, I'm covering it, and Alex Jones saying that there was 15% of the commenters saying that Alex Jones is part of the New World Order um, because he was bashing Chavez because he was anti-imperialist. He says why Hugo Chavez was bad news, and he kind of goes off in this video. So, But it's interesting because uh, it's mostly about uh, not the Nazis and Hitler, and uh, he never actually says anything about Zionists or Jews which I found very interesting. He always just says globalist. Or that uh, they created communism. He'll just say the globalists created communism. But the fact is, is that the United States already has a very sophisticated form of communism. They've already fulfilled many of the planks of it. So they go after other countries that have actually more democratic or social uh, a political system unique for them. Chavez and this uh, Thaksin, a tale of two socialists and Western hypocrisy. So confounding was the Australian newspaper's recent op-ed, Death of a Ruthless Autocrat, in regards to Hugh, uh, late Hugo Chavez. It says, confounding not for the op-ed's condemnation of the socialist policies or criticism of Chavez, an obstruction to Western corporate financier interests in South America for over a decade, but because of the obscene hypocrisy displayed throughout from the newspaper, it goes on here and says the corporate establishment in Australia that coddles a figure in nearby Thailand that is every bit as guilty of everything it accuses Chavez of. They begin by saying it was driven by a rational, demagogic, uh, self-defeating antagonism towards Washington that blinded him to the nation's interests. So actually what they're blaming him for is not opening up to Western ex exploitation domination by corporate financier monopolies and challenging the West's campaign of global aggression. The banker who shaped modern financial world after World War II was a Soviet spy who wanted America to become communist. He represented at the U.S. at Bretton Woods Conference in 44. He helped create institutions with, which led to capitalism taking over the world. And you got to remember the quote, uh, communism and capitalism are two sides of the same coin. And Chavez's nuttiest theories. It's funny because I actually believe in most of them.
Thank you.